using WhatsApp template, we are going to build a live application which Mumbai Metro use. So if you send hi over here, we'll get a three option, buy ticket, retail ticket and last transaction. If you click on the buy ticket, we'll get an option to buy the ticket. So you go to this link and purchase the ticket. Once you have purchased the ticket, when we click on the retrieve ticket, we get all the ticket which we have purchased right now. And this is the live application which the Mumbai Metro use right now. But we are going to create a dummy version of this and it will be exactly the same. So as you can see in the retrieve ticket, we don't have any ticket. And if you want to see the last transaction, we can click on the last transaction and we can see whatever last transaction you have. So the version we are going to build today, let's see that. So now we are on our production grade application over here, which is Maharashtra Mumbai Metro. So if I send hi, so we can see we are getting the same exact message. Hi Lakshit. So we have three options, buy ticket, retrieve ticket and last transaction. If I click on buy ticket, as you can see, we're getting an option to click here and purchase the ticket. If I click over here, so currently we don't have any payment processing. So we'll just get an empty screen over here, but the ticket has been purchased because since it is a demo application. So once the ticket has been purchased, so we get a message to check your latest status, click over here. So we have a main menu where you have the three options. Now we can retrieve the ticket and see the last transaction. So if I click on retrieve ticket, so now as you can see, we are getting the ticket which we purchased. So ticket found from Andheri to Bandra, 30 rupees. Then this is the date and kind of ID. So now if you want to see the last transaction, we can click on the last transaction and we can see the last transaction as well. Last transaction success and we get the message. And this all message are highly customizable in whatever need you want. So today we're going to dive deep inside the WhatsApp template and how they work. So my name is Lakshit and I help businesses to grow using the AI automation. So let's get started. So today's video will be dividing into two parts. In the first part, we are going to set up a Twilio account. In the second part, we are going to connect a Twilio account with the Anytime. So for the Twilio setup, go to the Twilio.com and do the sign in. So once you have done the sign in, you will see the same page which I am seeing. So by default, you will be getting $15.5 around kind of a free credits, which will be enough for you to buy the phone number. So the first thing which you are going to do is kind of buy a phone number. So you can come over here, search for phone number, click on buy a number and buy a number whichever you want. Just make sure that the voice and the SMS is enabled for that number. This is the exact page which we'll be seeing after login. So first step is to buy a phone number. Second step is to create the WhatsApp sender and third step is to create the template. So I have created a detailed video for the step one and step two. You can see that video in the I button. For the step three, I'm going to go detail in this video. So for the step one and two, let me give you an overview so that you are on the same page. So for the step one to buy a phone number, so we can jump to phone number over here and click on buy a number. So once you are in this page, select any kind of a phone number over here and just make sure that phone number has the voice and SMS capability. So once you are there, you can buy a phone number. This amount will be directed from the free credit that you have. So once you have the phone number, next step is to create the WhatsApp center. So jump to WhatsApp center over here, click on WhatsApp center. So now to create a WhatsApp center, you'll be requiring a premium account. So for that, there is a minimum fee of $20, which is kind of a paper as you go. So how many WhatsApp messages you send is it will be used for a long time. So don't worry, just pay your $20 so that you can create your own WhatsApp center over here. So now to create a WhatsApp center, come over here and click on the create new center, connect the phone number that you just bought and do the step which you are seeing. <clears throat> now follow the step as it is saying over here. If you want to see me following each and every step, there is a detailed video in the i button as I earlier mentioned. So now once we are done with the WhatsApp center, we'll be going in the left hand side and in the messaging, we can see there is a content template builder. We click on the content template builder. Now we need to build our own template. So template is nothing but where we can see there is a button, there is a click and that, that all functionality. That all functionality comes through the template builder. So for that, come over here and create new. Okay. So now we have different, different content type. Do you want to be template of only text? Or do you want to send any kind of a video uh, image over here? Do you want that kind of a list picker? Then call to action. There are multiple things over here. So in this video, we are going to work majorly on the two content type, which is kind of quick reply and call to action. These are the main content type, which most of the people use. Okay. So come over here and give any kind of a template name. Let's say test DB, then language. I'm using English. You can choose uh, as per you want. Okay, so for the first template, let's click on the call to action. Let's cl uh, click on create. Now we have body over here and a different different type of actions over here. Phone number, visit uh, website, voice call, voice call request, coupon code. When you click on the phone number, it directly it will dial the phone number. Visit website, it is kind of external website which will be redirecting. Voice call, it could be direct a normal voice call. Okay, and there are different different options over here. Let me show you what I have built. So in this video, we are using these three main template over here, which is kind of a ticket DB. Then there is a buy ticket and main menu. So for the first, when you are seeing the buy ticket, retrieve ticket and the last transaction, we are using this test DB. So when I click on this, 
So now you can see we have a message over here. This can be highly customizable, whatever message you want. But you might be seeing an unusual thing, which is kind of a variable name over here. So this is a variable name which we can pass whatever we want. So it will be highly customizable for the user who is using. So it could be Hi Lakshit, it could be Hi Mohan Raj, it could be any name over here. Okay. So now as you can see, it's a simple variable over here. Now we need a button. We need this three button: buy ticket, retrieve ticket, and last transaction. So we need to create the button. The first button name will be kind of buy ticket. This is a unique ID which will be using in the anytime part. So it should be unique name. So which for this we are using buy underscore ticket. Second button is kind of a retrieve ticket. It has a unique name. Third button is kind of a last transaction. It also has a unique ID over here. So once you have created this, just click on the save button. Then as you can see, all the template have the unique SID over here. It is called as a template SID, which all the template have the unique identifier. So now once we have this ticket DB, now we need to have another template for the buy ticket. So in the buy ticket, let's see what we have. So as you can see, this is the first template which we build, okay, which has the buy ticket, retrieve ticket and last transaction. So when the user click on buy ticket, we need this template over here, which says that in response to your order, click the link below to complete the ticket purchase. Okay, so for that we need this template. So if you go to template builder, so this is the same template which we saw over there. In response to your order, click the link below to complete the purchase. So we can see the type of action is visit website because we want to redirect to the another website where we can get a callback to the end end part. Okay, so as you can see, the button text is kind of a click here, and the website URL is the URL of the end end web hook over here, where we are sending the unique identifier for each and every user so that we can change the status of that user. So as you can see in the template, we have the phone number because phone number is a unique identifier for each and every user. So once we have this template, so now after that. Whenever we are done with the purchasing of the ticket, we need to see the main menu again. So for that, we have the third template over here. When we click on the main menu, again, this template will come. Okay. So for that, we have this last template, which we'll be using called as main underscore menu. So if I click on this, so as you can see, kind of, it is a type of quick reply. So this ticket DB was kind of a quick reply. This buy ticket was a call to action. This main menu is again kind of a quick reply. In the quick reply, we are sending a message. So this message will be coming from the enter. So it is a variable over here. So, and the button name would be kind of a main menu and the ID we are having the unique identifier is called as a main underscore menu. So once we have all this template ready, we are good to go to the anytime part. So let's jump to anytime. So now in the anytime, you can see this is the workflow which we are going to build. So it has the two main webhook URL over here. The first webhook URL and second webhook URL. The people who don't know webhook, webhook is a unique address, just like a home address. So whenever we want to send any kind of a parcel or delivery, we just give the address so the person can come there. In the same, whenever we receive the message on WhatsApp, we want to send that message to somewhere. In our case, we want to send to Anytime. So we have this webhook URL over here. So where we can see we have this URL. So this URL will be specifying in the WhatsApp so that whenever new messages come to WhatsApp, we can receive over here. So we need to copy this URL. Okay. So once you have copied, go to a Twilio. Inside that, in the left hand side, you can see messaging and we have WhatsApp center. Click on WhatsApp center. Now go to the center which we created. So inside this center, we can see the webhook URL for incoming message. Over here, just paste the webhook URL which you have. Okay. And the method will be post over here. So once this is done, go to edit and again. So to receive the message, let me show you how it works. So let me on it. Let me listen for the test event. So now it is listening for the test event. So if I go to WhatsApp, if I send hi, so as you can see, the hi has been sent. Now if you go to edit and so we can see we have received the message. So in the body part, we can see we have the hey message. That's how it works properly. Okay. So now once we have the template in place and there could be normal message like hi. So now we need to identify, is it a normal message or we're getting a message from a template. So for that, we have a if condition over here. So in the if condition, we're checking that does the message type. So in the body, we have the message type over here. So does the message type is equal to interactive. Interactive means it is coming from the template. If it is the message type is equal to text. So currently, as we can see the high, the message type is kind of a text. Okay. So for the button pressing part, we'll be getting the message type as equal to interactive over here. So if I execute this step, so as you can see, we are going in the false branch. So in the false branch, we need to send the template. So if I click on the HTTP route, so this is the URL which we'll be using. So this URL, if I open it, so this part will remain the same. This is the base URL of Twilio. This is the version. This is the account. And over here, we'll be requiring the account ID of Twilio. So how to get that? So go to Twilio. Now click on the Twilio home. Click on this account. Now over here, you might be seeing the account SID and the odd token. Okay. So we'll be requiring both this thing. So for that, let's copy the account ID. So now as you can see, this is the same account ID which I have over there in slash message.json. So once we have this thing, so we need to create the credentials. So now we need to create the authentication. So for that, we'll be creating the generic credential type. Inside that, we'll be requiring the basic auth. And now we need to create the Twilio credentials. So for that, if we see, so we need to require a user kind of ID and the password. How we'll get this thing? So for that, 
go to Twilio. Inside, you can see there is a go to API key. Click on go to API key. It is asking for the verification. Just verify it. So now as you can see, I already have the API key. So for you to create a new API key, just click on the create API key. Now just give any kind of a name. Let's say Anaton dash two. And don't forget this key type should be kind of a main over here because main has the access to the account type which we are using. So once that is done, click on create. Now once that is done, you will be seeing the SID over here and the secret over here. Just copy the SID and the secret just in the place of user, put the SID and the password, place the secret. So once that is done, the Twilio credential will be ready. So let me go out and now we need to send the body. So for the body, we need to pass the body content type as equal to form URL encoded. Okay. And two from and content SID and content variable. These are the all information which will be passing. So two means to whom we need to send the message. In our case, we are the person who will be receiving the message. Okay. And from whom? From the phone number which you purchase in the Twilio. Okay. So in the left hand side, you might be seeing there is a two part over here. That two will go in the place of from and there will be from over here and this from will be going to two. And why it is happening? Because two means we are getting the message from two. This is the earlier part. And now we are sending the message to that person. That there is a kind of vice versa over here. So for that reason, the two will go to from and the from will go to two over here. Okay. So once you have that thing, now we need to provide the content SID. This content SID is nothing but the template which we created. So if I go to Twilio and now we need to send this ticket DB where we have three button. Just copy this SID and place it over here. Okay. So once we have that thing, now we need a variable. So inside this template, you might be seeing there is a variable called as username. So we need to pass this variable accordingly. So in the message, when we got, there will be kind of a profile name. This profile name will act as a unique name for each and every user. So just drag and drop this profile name in the value over here. This will be object field where we'll be passing the key as a user underscore name. It's the same name which we provided in a template and there will be a profile part over here. Once you have that, just execute the step. So as you can see, it is executed. Now as you can see tongue. So we got the template information over here and the, with the variable information. So now we need to handle the situation whenever user click on any of the button. So for that, let's go over here and again, listen for the event and click on the buy ticket. Now you can see we have got the information. Now if I go to if part over here, so which I was seeing earlier, the message type is kind of interactive. So it means the button has been pressed. If I execute the step, so we are going to two branch and now we need to switch over here. This switch indicate that which route we want to go. There is a buy ticket route, retrieve ticket, last transaction and main menu which will be having. So now currently in the body part, json.body, we have button payload, which indicate the unique ID, which we provided for each and every button. So we have a buy ticket over here. So we are checking, is it a buy ticket or not? So it is a buy ticket. So if I execute the step, so we are going in the buy ticket route. So inside the buy ticket, we need to send a template again, because if you see earlier, when you are clicking on the buy ticket, we are getting this another template where we can purchase the ticket. So for that, we'll go to Anaton. The all thing will remain same. This URL will remain same. Then the credential which you created will remain same in the URL encoded. All the thing will remain same. Only thing which will change is this content SID and content variable. Okay. Now content SID will be passing the another template. Now we'll be passing this buy ticket template over here. So we'll be copying this SID and this template has any kind of variable. Yeah, this has the variable of WSID. WSID is a unique value for each and every user. It is kind of a phone number. Okay. If I show you mine in the left hand side, you can see a WAID. Okay. Where is a phone number? This is the unique field which will be using. So the, in the key, it is kind of a WID because we use that in, uh, in our template. And over here, we'll be using our template ID. So once that is done, so we'll click on the execute step. It'll go to WhatsApp. So as you can see, we have got this information over here. So now whenever we click on this button, so if I show you the template, so now whenever we click on this button, it will trigger this URL. Okay. So as you can see, this URL is a production URL. So if I show you mine, there is another webhook which has this URL, but the rest URL has kind of a webhook test over here. It is kind of a webhook. So for that, what I need to do, I just need to make it active. So when it is active, it will receive this information over here. So let me click this button. So now if I go to execution in the execution, you can see this webhook has been triggered. So this webhook is kind of a get type and the path is kind of with which we provided in a template and in the information, if we see, we are getting the WID, which we passed. Okay. And every information which we received. So once we have this information, we need to append this information inside the Excel sheet. So this is the Excel sheet, which we are using where we are storing the information, what we have. And these things are hard coded right now. If I show you the Excel sheet, so this is the Excel sheet. So as you can see, this is a WID, which we'll be getting. Okay. And date is kind of a now, whatever date currently we have and the status station, a station B paid amount. Everything is hard coded right now, because if you want to create the whole production application, we have the URL. Just redirect the information to that URL and from that URL collect all the information and call this enter webhook again. So everything will work properly. So to eliminate that all information, because that is kind of a front end part, which you can do. I have used the hard code value over here. 
okay so once we have that information it will get executed and another template will get called and this template is regarding the main menu all the information will remain same over here and in the two part as you can see we are passing this information over here but we don't have this proper information so for that we always pass whatsapp colon plus and then the number which we have so this is the num unique number which we pass in the variable so variable we have information over here and the from part it will remain the same because we have a single phone number over here that phone number will remain same so we are passing that phone number in the from part and the content as id that pass the template id and the content variable we are passing the user message so for our user message we are using to check your latest status of the ticket click this button okay so whenever this get executed so in the whatsapp you can see we have already got the message because it ran earlier so now whenever you click on main menu what will happen let me go to anytime let me start this uh, event it is listening if i go to whatsapp click on main menu so now as you can see we got the event over here so if you go to the uh, check template in the template part we can see we have this message type as interactive if i execute the step and now it is a main menu type so if i execute this step so we are going inside the main menu so in the inside the main menu we are again sending the same template which we sent earlier which is kind of a buy ticket retrieve transaction and the last transaction if i call this so now in the whatsapp you can see we are receiving the same template over here so now we need to retrieve the ticket so to retrieve the ticket let me go to any time click on the listen event now if i click on retrieve ticket we have this retrieve ticket we received the event if part will run interactive mode the switch part will be going to the retrieve ticket over here so now we need to send the message to user so now the information is already stored inside the excel sheet we need to retrieve the information from excel sheet and just send the message to user that's the whole thing this ai agent is doing over here this ai agent using the chat model is kind of open router you can use chat gpt anthropic whatever you want and we're using two tool over here one tool is to retrieve the ticket information second tool is to get the last transaction so for that we're using the system prompt and in the prompt part we are passing the user wid which is unique okay this is the kind of a wid then we are passing the user text over here whatever text we are getting in our case it's kind of a retrieve ticket in the last transaction which will be kind of a last transaction and we need only kind of one output so for that we'll be going into system prompt and this is the whole system prompt which defines that which tool to use when to use this all information will be there i'll be providing all the information at the last of the video so stick to the end so now once we have done the system prompt if i execute it so now as you can see we got the reply over here so now we'll be sending the normal message and not template message so for that if i open this this url will remain the same nothing will change over here over here also to and from just the only how we are getting the message is changing because if we check the template option over here inside this we have a to and fro just drag and drop to and fro over here this is the same information and now we are not passing content id or content variable over here we are passing the body just the normal message so this is the message which we got from the ai agent we passing the message over here and execute the step as you can see now we are getting the message over here so this is how the retrieve ticket work in the same sense the last uh, transaction will also work i will leave it up to you so you will get this template and all the information so you can go and try it on so i hope you like the video because this video honestly took a lot of time to figure out everything because i have to read all the documentation and see how things work so if you want this template you can go to my school community inside the classroom inside the youtube resource you will be seeing social media automation where we have the whatsapp with template okay just click on that you will be seeing the template builder url over here and also the end template so i hope you like the video please press the like button comment your thought let me know your feedback and subscribe to my channel we'll meet in the next video till then take care